Heart failure, stroke, diabetes and obesity are a major public health concern in Europe. Our own behavior, like an unhealthy diet, too little physical activity or smoking, can influence the risk factors. But there's more to the story. Causes for these diseases are also partly genetic. How can we understand this complex interplay between genetic and behavioral causes for disease? Cardiovascular disease is one of the major causes still of death and, and illness in, in Europe. People differ in their risks of cardiovascular disease. That's partly to do with their genetics. It's partly to do with lifestyle. If we're to make a, a, a better job of treating and preventing uh, cardiovascular disease, we need to understand both of those. And importantly, we need to understand how they interact to produce risk of, of uh, cardiovascular disease. The international collaboration of Engage gathers leading research groups from Europe, Canada and Australia, who join forces to share data from more than 600,000 individuals. With this physical and medical information, they are able to gradually unfold the mechanisms that lay behind metabolic and cardiovascular diseases. So it's really important to have data available from, from thousands of people so that we uh, can uh, attain the results that we are interested in. We have a critical mass in terms of both the number of researchers that are involved as well as the number of samples that we have and the wide variety of information that we have in terms of both disorders, genes and exposures. Something we've never been able to do otherwise. There are many traits connecting to cardiovascular diseases. Smoking and diabetes are some of the main connections. The diabetes is the most common disease in the world. With more knowledge, we hope to be able to be able to subclassify diabetes much better and thereby to use that information also to predict outcome of the disease better, <coughs> the response to certain treatment, non-response or side effects. Various methods are used in Engage, like twin research, bioinformatics and genome-wide association studies that can tell us which particular gene is related to a disease. Twin research is used to understand how genetic and environmental factors influence health. I have studied and collected both twins and families where there are a lot of, say, smokers. And we tried to find out why smoking runs in families by examining their genes, but also the environments where they live and how the environments and the genes interact. I smoke. I don't smoke. To me it was a bit, really a bit weird because I very much considered us as being the non-smoking twins. Like it was not something that we would do. Anna and Maria are identical twins. Because identical twins share the same DNA and grow up in the same circumstances, they are the perfect study case in research on the interaction of genetics and lifestyle. From the twin studies we already know that um, for smoking initiation the influences of genes are not very big but for uh, the quantity uh, of smoking and nicotine dependence, um, genes play an important role. I think this is just the first step in our research. I expect that uh, hundreds or maybe thousands of genes are involved in smoking behavior and genes will interact with each other and also with the environment, so there's a lot to be discovered. We've been tested by the Netherlands Twin Register, so we do know now that we are monozygotic. And if people keep on comparing you, mm, sometimes you develop a certain type of behavior to be not like the other one, but then you get those extremes and that's also, yeah, it's not a natural way of acting. Sometimes that can be a bit difficult. We are in, in, in very many ways very much alike. I think we're really similar for most things. We're both lean, we're both equally sporty, eating equally healthy, I would say. I don't really mind about my weight, but if I would be heavier than Maria, that would be a problem. <laughs> Overweight is a growing problem in Western society. Engage can tell us more about the causes of this problem. If you eat lots of fast food and all healthy foods, you probably become obese. And then if you have an identical twin sister who, who eats healthy food and exercises a lot, she still stays lean, even though you have exactly the same DNA. Obesity is a very complex disease. We are hoping to get more into their baseline to find out like, what is actually causing it and also what kind of changes obesity causes in the human body and why do we get like, diabetes and cardiovascular diseases that associate with obesity. 
Understanding the role of genes, environment and lifestyle is a complex enterprise that may also require thinking in innovative ways. In my view, uh, a, a sort of hidden uh, promise and future treasure is actually going after the people that are unexpectedly healthy. They may be, uh, they, that's maybe only 2% of the people. If you find the causes of why they're unexpectedly healthy, then you uh, may actually find that this is due to defective genes that protect them against, for instance, a severe reaction. If you find those causes, you may have a therapy in your hands for the other 98% of the people that uh, are not protected. Data sharing is a great way to enhance scientific research. In order to pave the way for more international data sharing, there are some hurdles to be taken. Different countries have different laws. An ethical perspective is essential to harmonize this. So there's been a movement um, actually growing more and more international for people to be able to exchange their data, exchange their samples, work in, in collaborations. And along with that movement has been some work to try to harmonize the ethics so that we are able to have this kind of seamless interchange of data and samples while still protecting people's rights and confidentiality. And the communication with the general public is very important because so many people have a misunderstanding of genetics and because they've given us something by providing data and samples and participating in our studies, we want to give something back to them in the form of knowledge and what we're learning. Big steps have been made in understanding genes and genome structure. Engage research lines have resulted in identifying genes related to dozens of medically significant traits. The main goal is to translate the discoveries into medical practice and tools that can be used in the future to treat patients. There are a lot of findings in the pipeline right now. Uh, one of them is that body mass index or how fat you are, how obese you are, is indeed causal for a number of traits, everything from heart failure to uh, type 2 diabetes. That's a huge challenge, but big problems need big solutions. And in Engage, we've been able to bring together some of the best researchers in Europe, some of the strongest clinical resources, some of the newest technologies to help to understand cardiovascular disease and how it comes about in ways and using approaches that none of us could have attempted on our own.